people come across your life and they believe in you, they light you on fire, they make you feel alive. And that's sometimes all we need is just one person, one person to come in and say, you got this, you can do it. Welcome, bienvenue, bonjour to the beautiful Soul Ed Life podcast. For women who desire to awaken their heartfelt desires, trust themselves fully, and connect with their soul's purpose through beauty. Oniva, let's go. Hello, hello, and welcome to the beautiful Soul Led Life podcast. This is Tara Marino, and ooh la la, are you ready? Are you ready? So I prayed a lot before bringing this particular guest to the podcast, and especially the night before we did the recording, really asking Spirit if I was going to share something very particular about this guest. And I'm not going to tell you now. You'll hear it when we first open the podcast. But what I want to say is that this podcast is so vulnerable. It's so authentic. You will hear some deep personal stories. You will see a a level of evolution between two women. And you will see a deep, deep love and respect between two women who have made a commitment and said yes. So I would like to formally introduce Kathleen Healy. She's a holistic health coach a New York physical education teacher, wife, and mom of two young boys. After struggling to feel comfortable in her own skin and lose unwanted weight for years, she finally decided to do something about it. What started as a quest to conquer her own health issues has turned into a holistic approach that has supported both men and women to step into who they really are and confidently show up in their lives like never before. This episode is not about weight loss. This episode is about so much more. And yet, if you are in a position in your life where you are feeling an ache and a pain with the way you're currently relating to your body, this is for you. Enjoy this episode. Make sure you tag Kathleen and myself and let us know what came up for you. We can't wait to cheer you on and love on you. Here we go. Hello, hello, bonjour, and welcome to the Beautiful Soul Ed Life podcast. This is Tara, and my heart is racing so fast. Honestly, the guest that I have to share with you today, I was praying about it last night, and I was like, okay, how much do I say about this woman? And I just want to put it right out there because this is such an emotional conversation for both of us and such a powerful and potent conversation. As we were praying before we got started, we both started crying. So just to let you know, we got teary eyed. So this woman, I know very, very well. This woman has, I've been in her life since she was born. And I can remember this particular moment. I have so many moments with her, but this one moment we were sitting outside. I don't know if she remembers. I think she does. We were sitting outside at the Bessie's house, our our second cousin's house. And our grandmother had just passed away. And we were sitting around a table and she shared with me that her dream, I don't know if you remember, that her dream was to become a health coach. This, I was... 26 years old. So she was quite a bit younger than me. (laughs) And so I'm going to be 48 now. And I could tell that she had this commitment and this devotion to her, even then. And we both kind of grew up, went went our own ways. I moved to France, the whole thing. And then I moved back to the States. And we reconnected in a really extraordinary way. And so this is my cousin, but this is what I want to say. I'm not doing her a favor. I don't do favors. This isn't a handout. Like this woman has my utmost respect and admiration. I've witnessed her grow her business, grow her family. She is an extraordinary mother. And what she has poured into what we're going to talk about today is top, top, top notch. Like she is the real freaking deal. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you this beautiful woman in front of us. If you happen to be seeing us on YouTube, you see us. If you're listening to us on Spotify or Apple or all the places, I'm wearing a white tank top. 
Kathleen is wearing a V-neck black, what is it, a sweater? With her St. Yes, Christopher's but- medal. Yes. <laughs> the most important part. And yes, I would like to introduce to you all Kathleen Healy. Hi, babe. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I am very honored and I feel blessed and all the feelings to be here right now. Thank you for the time and the privilege and the honor of being on your podcast. I've listened to every single episode. I don't even know if you know this. And I remember your first episode, I was outside jogging and running, and you were talking about how it's never too late to start on your first podcast. And I just thought, wow, yeah, like, because you were so ahead of the online space before it became like influencers and social media popped up. So I always wondered like, oh man, like, when's she going to do a podcast? You would do the mini stories on Instagram. And you shared very vulnerably, like you wanted to do one so many years ago, and then and then you just did it, and it's never too late to start. And something you told me many years ago, well, not that many years ago, right? So it was like during COVID when I started to make health coaching official and start a business and you know get out there. And I definitely want to go into like your business and the whole piece. And what I really want the audience to know as well is that you've lived this which is really important to me. You know, any woman that I see growing a business, you can tell the difference between someone who's actually lived into her story versus someone who has an idea and is looking at it from a marketing angle. Like I witnessed you have a full transformation of your body. I saw it. Yeah, you lived this story. This isn't something that you were like, oh, you know, health coaching, that sounds pretty cool. Like, let me just jump in there. Yeah. And you saw it, the painful parts of my life. I grew up in a beautiful, wonderful family, really confident, danced all the way into college. And there was two years where I had stopped dancing and that really like, you know, threw me out in so many ways. I think, well, I know reflecting back, I was in an abusive high school relationship. I couldn't see myself out of it. I'm the oldest of five. My parents are amazing, but all of them played sport. There was a million things going on. And I used food to soothe. I was partying. I had no idea how to take care of my body. I was you know, at a 4.0 GPA, all of the things, but I did not understand the way food and movement and mindset impacted. And I remember walking in Walmart and getting every protein bar and protein powder that I could find thinking that it was going to help and cure me. And it went on for two years. I mean, I'll share here. I know this is a safe space, but I would even make myself throw up. I had no idea what I was doing. (laughs) And it was really, really painful. And, you know, as a mom now, like I see that my parents let me figure it out. And I'm really, like, that must have been really hard for them. Like, they joke, like, oh, yeah, how many protein bars were you going to eat, Kathleen? And like, yeah, your your shorts were a little short there. Your V-necks are all of these things. And they let me figure it out on my own. And that's what I do as a coach for other men and women is that they figure it out on their own. And that's how they keep it off and keep mm-hmm. it going. I love that you're sharing that because... I agree as a mother to watch our children in any kind of pain or struggle. Like our first reaction is like, let me fix it. Let me like, we don't want to see them in pain. So how much courage and actually love, love that it takes to allow someone to figure it out on their own, knowing then that it's their transformation. And I know that that's a really important part of what you teach that any one of your clients, that it's their journey, it's their transformation, that they're taking ownership of it. It's not about the protein bar or the diet or you. You're there as a support structure and to remind them that it's theirs. Yeah, 100%. And now with AI and Google, I mean, the X's and O's are there. You can get a meal plan. You can, you know, get a nutritionist. You could do all of these things and they will, uh, you could input everything into a program that will tell you you know, most people come to me wanting to lose weight. We know that it's so much deeper 
than losing weight and grams of protein and grams of fiber. It is like, and it takes time to build trust and build a relationship to allow the person, the human, and I know you say like a soul's experience, right? To say, okay, yeah, I'm making myself throw up in the bathroom because this trigger or this happened or this struggle, or, you know, being there with someone to celebrate their success and hold their hand when they feel like that rock bottom. And, you know, over time, as I started to heal myself through those years, so I was in really uncomfortable in my own body from me like 19 to 21. Yeah. And little by little, as I started to heal, the people around me, you know, they did hold my hand. Like I definitely didn't do it all on my own, but it was, they let me do it on my own. It was like a balance of also holding my hand and celebrating the little things that might not seem like a big deal to anybody else. But when you're in pain, I needed that support. And I find most people do need that. They don't need a, a meal plan or, you know, I, I do a lot of green drinks, but I also joke that I really do nothing with green drinks at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Because again, it's not about that. That's a support structure, yeah. but it's not the main part of the conversation. No, it's wild too. Since I started this a little bit before COVID, I've worked with so many different kinds of people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, men, women, corporate, stay-at-home moms. And as much as we're different, like we're all still so alike and we know we can do it. We know, you know, the right things. We just trusting ourselves to go there. There's a level of self-care that I'm still on covering for myself. That is definitely not one of my strengths, but as I start to, you know, lose the weight and feel better, that's what I've been getting better at. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, self-care is going to be an endless journey, I feel like for all of us. And we go through so many different life phases that we then need to adjust what does self-care look like and feel like. And I want to get into yeah. in a little bit, like how you, how you do honor yourself and your body with two young kids. But just in a minute, Ooh. because I know it's a big deal. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd be open to backing up just a little bit. One, why you stopped dancing, if that feels yeah. important. And then like two, what inside of you got you to the point where you were like, I don't want to stay here. Like, whether it's, it's not always, it's never, I've never, as you know, about the weight, but that feeling in our bodies where we know yeah. we're not honoring who we are. So what had you stopped dancing and what was that catalyst where you were like, no, no more, like I'm not settling for this? Yeah. So I stopped dancing senior year of high school and nothing new, but that, not pressure, but the draw to, I was dancing like seven days a week, weekends competitively. And I, I didn't get that social part. Like I wanted to go out on the weekends. I wanted to go to the parties and I think that's what it was. I just was lost. Like I had broken up with my, you know, boyfriend at the time. I I was confused. I didn't know what I wanted. I felt like I was just done with it. But that brought me so much life. So, you know, and then the life was sucked out of me and I was insecure and going to all of these things. And, and that lasted for like, I guess, yeah, like a, a year and a half, two years. And then I said like, whoa, back up. I was looking at pictures and really not recognizing myself at all, you know, and having those quiet, the, the talks in my head, you know, beating myself up, trying to start over every Monday. I was so uncomfortable. I had to like let it all out. And then what I did to heal was to say enough is enough. I got to go back to what makes me feel really good again, instead of trying to fight off this weight. And I started dancing again. Mm -hmm. And then within that in college, I found, you know, amazing group of friends. And I also met my husband now, <laughs> which it sounds like now it's saying it out loud. I don't know if I've ever like really, really connected it, but he is just like my best friend in the world. I don't want to get upset. But, but you can because he, he, like, think about what you just said. He didn't judge me. I really did feel at that point. And if anybody is in pain and feels like they don't recognize themselves, in a picture or they're always just trying to lose weight. Like we feel judged and criticized by other people. And we already know all the bad things because we're saying it to ourselves. And then other people say it and with their body language or 
you know, tone of voice. And he came across, he came in my world and was like the most non-judgmental person. And it was like a gift. And his mom was running the Marine Corps marathon because her son was in the Marines. And I was like, that's so cool. Like running, what is really running? And that now is the biggest part of my life was running. And it was like just chipping away at it. One mile, two mile, three miles, not to burn 300 calories because it felt really good. I could get lost in the music again. It felt like I was dancing and his family was supportive. Of course, my mom and family and Uncle Jimmy came to my first half marathon with Ann Eileen and I found a community, you know, just found a community and friends and it all, I started to shed that old identity and it didn't happen like that. And it, it just was like little by little by little. And I was just saying goodbye to that version, yeah. like, bye, like, you know, and, and let me up level and, Ooh, this feels really good not to lose weight, but in my heart, yeah. in my soul, this feels really <sighs> good. And I want more of this. Yeah. And how do I get more of this into my life? It's so powerful that you share that because again, in, in our minds, that can make sense to us. Like, okay, let me not worry about the diet or losing weight. Let me just feel good. But when we actually have the experience of that, like we're not thinking about that. We're really saying, what makes me feel good? And can I trust myself enough to allow that, to choose that? You just said that it was the getting back into dancing, which is something that you love that made you feel alive, that really started the whole process. And then healing. Yeah. Like seeing you and loving you as you were like giving a reflection to you of like, no, you're enough. Whatever you want to do is fine. Good. Take care of yourself. Feel good. But you're already enough. Yeah. And these people come across your life, life and they believe in you. They light you on fire. They make you feel alive. And that's sometimes all we need is just one person, one person to come in and say, you got this. You can do it. And not a formula, not a meal plan, not this, just you got this and I love you and trust and it's all going to be okay. And it has all been okay. (laughs) And I want to, as a coach and for myself, like continue to lean into that. And you always say like, give yourself permission. I have to pause frequently and say, give yourself permission, Kathleen. You could do this. Like think of the times where you didn't or didn't want to, and then you didn't, it all worked out. Like it it is all okay. But hearing it from somebody else at those points in my life, like, wow, like really moved the needle a lot for me. So you had this huge transformation. You started prioritizing yourself again. You met this amazing man. You got married. You started running. You started falling in love with yourself again. Like you said, letting that old identity go. But it sounds like also not judging her a lot either, just understanding that that was where she was and you wanted to feel differently. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that point because it never would have gotten me to this point. And so when I am in pain and I struggle, I say, okay, (laughs) be thankful for this pain, be thankful for the struggle. And it's your choice how you respond to it and lean into those people that are supportive you know, you don't need to hear the negative stuff. You already know what that is. And yeah, that past version, but she's always still with yes. us in a way. Like it doesn't really ever truly go away. But yeah, so I'm thankful for that now. Looking back, I'm like, wow, I can, can't believe I'm here talking to you about health coaching. It's unreal. It's really unreal. It's <laughs> so incredible. It really is extraordinary. Like what we both have lived through up until this point and what it is that you said yes to in your life, Kathleen. It's like, no, I could get super emotional about it. You know, like I said earlier, like you are the real deal. You're the real deal. I want you to know. I know you already know, but I want you to know. So I want to fast forward for everybody, right? You have this, you fall in love. You have this amazing husband. You have two beautiful boys like we cannot even 
They're crazy. <laughs> they are. Oh my God. They're amazing. They're amazing. Amazing. So I want to fast forward to COVID, right? Where you and I connect mm-hmm. again. I moved back from France and we hadn't talked in a while. Like we'd seen each other, but you and I hadn't really, really connected. And we started really yeah. connecting again. And you shared with me, like you wanted this. You were like, I, I want to build a business. Like it's time. I didn't even know it was possible. And like when you had started this and we're family and you've shared this, I mean, we were all like, what the hell is she doing? Like <laughs> moving to, and, and I'm really close to Tara's mom. And I was like, this is crazy. Like we're such a close family. Like she's going to Paris. Like what's this online coaching thing? And again, there's like that judgment, but I, what I respect and admire so much about you and other, and there's other people that do this where they trust themselves enough to go for it. But yeah, I can't believe you still moved to Paris. I I even love that you're saying that because it's true when we take a big leap and it's really scary and the feedback that we can get from our families, as much as they love us because they care and they're worried, it is like, are you crazy? What are you doing? And I remember like the whole entire family, like worried about me, kind of like, you're crazy. Yeah. What are you doing? What is this online thing? What the hell do you mean you're moving to Paris? Yeah, yeah. You're moving to France. Like what about health insurance? Like everybody was so afraid of me going. Yeah. And yeah, I did it. I did it. And so when we connected again, I felt the and I don't know, do you remember saying that to me at grandma's funeral? I remember sharing that with you. And I also remember being really curious about what you were doing. Yeah. Like, this is so cool. Like, I love conversations like this. And I loved podcasts way before podcasts were a thing. And like, all of this, like your YouTube videos, I used to watch and like follow the emails. I, and your gratitude 40 day thing, I was really into it because I knew there was something more like that's the spirituality of it. Yeah. So I was like, I know that's so much a part of my healing and my transformation. How do I connect this? How do I do this? And I went to school for business and because my transformation hit me and I fell in love with health and wellness, I changed my, I, well, I graduated with a business degree. And then I told my parents, actually, I want more health and wellness. I'm going to go teach phys ed. And they were like, what? What? Like I had an internship with Simon and Schuster in Manhattan. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, no, no, no. I like, I really want this. Like, I really like this. And then I went to phys ed and I've been teaching phys ed in New York for almost 13 years. But then there was like more, right? Like, okay, this was good. What's next? Yeah. When we first connected again during COVID yeah, and you were, you know, talking a little bit about this business and kind of asking me what I had done and you, I wasn't easy on you. Do you remember? Uh, no, <laughs> no. First of all, no. it was like, yeah. And that is what <laughs> I think that also is in line with like the whole coaching process, right? Like you have to let people sit and think you have to do that, but that's a, skill. That's a beauty. That's uh, like a master, right? Like that's let them think and sit. And then I wrote an email about like inquiring. I wanted to learn more. And then you email me back, but like really hard questions. Like I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, right. But sitting and letting someone sit and think there's a skill to that. (laughs) This is what I knew though. You know, because I did, I I was like, okay, if we're going to have this conversation together about business, let's like really have it. Or it's a waste of both of our times. And you, every time I said to you, okay, here's an assignment. Think about this. What about this? Explore this. What about creating this? You were like, my gosh, Kathleen, I was so freaking impressed by you. Like nothing to do with you being my cousin. And I want you to know that and everybody else to know that because I know I wasn't easy on you. I didn't, there were no, like none of that energy. It was really like, are you going to rise? If you're going to rise, I'm here for you. You Do this, I'm here. But if you're not, it's totally cool. I love you. And you were like freaking again and again and again, just going to the next level and the next level and the next level. This was you. And then I I recently took the BBB. Right. Like 
<laughs> that's the boutique coaching business. Yeah. Is that what she's talking about, ladies? She's talking about the boutique coaching right. business. So, and, yeah. And there, because there's all like, I'm always like, okay, learn, grow, settle, reflect, next. And these questions were, they were not easy. They were something I needed to wrestle with. And it took time. And then, and then COVID hit. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go for it. Like, we're kind of home. We're hibernating. Thank God. I'm so blessed that, like, you know, we were a couple people in my life in, in and out of the hospital, but, you know, nothing too crazy. So I was able to use that quiet time and space for my business, for myself. And I just finished working with someone who lost 100 pounds naturally, and she was going to go get bypass surgery. And I mean, and then I just finished working with someone who lost like 25 pounds. And yes, I'm I'm saying these numbers, but like in those numbers, it's like shedding those limiting beliefs, shedding that they can't do it, shedding that they have to settle that, okay, this is, you know, this is good enough. And I've had those thoughts and I still do like, this is good. Like be grateful for everything you have and you're good. But I don't know, like, but, and and that's why it's like, oh, they're, I could do this all day is work and talk with men and women because health, you know, and we all need our health, but there's so many things that get inside our head and you just need someone to sit and talk and ask questions to say like, are we going to go there? And when we can do that, we start hitting these marks and and the weight starts coming off. I love that you're saying this, like this default that we have of like, okay, that's good. And that's like good enough. And that temptation we have to like stop. Because we want to be grateful versus leaning in again and letting it get better and better and better. Like gratitude, to me, gratitude is the desire for more. Yeah. There's that difference that so many of us have been taught. I think both of us, you know, our families are so close. Be grateful, be grateful, be grateful for what you have. And that, yes, of course, but that doesn't mean you don't continue to grow and want more. Right. But it comes off selfish sometimes or that you're not prioritizing the right things. And that has a lot to do with how we use food to soothe, or we don't work out at a certain time, or we don't do certain things because, you know, we're grateful, we're good with what we have. But there, when you have that feeling inside, like, you know, no, like, no, like, I am grateful, but I want more and that's okay. You know, giving yourself permission is such a big, a big yeah. thing. So let's talk about how freaking successful your business is. And not by like, I'm not talking about from a bragging perspective. I'm talking about from an inspirational perspective of how you've leaned into this and helped so many people transform their lives. And what I want everyone to know is you do this part-time. Oh, you have a yes. full-time teaching job. Yeah. Because I... No, I will never forget. Like we talked about that past version and saying goodbye, but she's still with you. I will never forget. And I would be lying if I said there weren't moments in my life where I'm like, oh God, like you feel like crap or you need, you know, like, I guess I just, I'll never forget how painful it was. And if there are men and women and you know, people that are like, you know, I'm in pain, I'm there for you. Okay. The boys might have basketball at eight, but we'll, we could get up at five. If this is really important to you, let's meet at five. Or I get pick up the boys from school at four. And if this is really important, then we could take our call in the car. And I usually will take calls from three to four sometimes in the car. I mean, it's not ideal. I'd rather be at home in an office, but I will make time. I'd rather not watch a show or skip that or sometimes like not even go out to dinner or stuff because I, I really love it and I feel like it works. <laughs> well, I know it works. And there's so much money and time spent on things that don't move like in here. That's what's important to me. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's how it goes. 5 a.m. calls and daycare parking lot meetings. <laughs> I mean, I did so many of my coaching calls in the beginning in the car. I cannot yeah. even tell you how many calls in yeah. the car. Because yeah. Dom and Nico mm-hmm. were like, Meeks was like two years old when I started yeah. Elegant Femme. So that means Dom was four. So it's almost like it's really, really close to the same, like juggling that and balancing that. And, you know, I feel like one of the reasons this is so 
true and successful for you, again, as I said in the beginning, you live this. The level of commitment that you yeah. invite your clients into, you have for yourself. Or it wouldn't work. Yeah. Like you are literally devoted to this conversation completely inside. And your authenticity of sometimes you still feel like shit or sometimes you yeah. question things. I mean, it's. Yeah. And now health and wellness is so overwhelming with social media. And I also teach phys ed and health at a high school. So I see what the kids go through as teenagers. And then I see these teenagers grow up into moms and grandmas and I don't want anyone to ever feel that they're alone because when I was in pain, I did feel alone. And so once I felt like I had someone who loved me and said, it's okay. And you know, that, that helps. So I I don't want anyone to ever feel alone. I am committed. I like, I do this for my day job. I do it. Yeah. As my side, but I will always make time for somebody or anybody that really wants help. (laughs) Not even help. I don't even like using the word help because it feels like I come from a place of like, I know better and they know better. They know themselves best. So I I usually say like, I'm there to support, right? Like, yeah. And you are, how old are the boys now? So Killian's five and a half and Caden is two and a half. So I, I just want like anyone, any woman listening, like we use so many excuses why we can't honor ourselves. Mm-hmm. Young mm-hmm. kids, right? I'm a busy mom. I've had like so many excuses. So what would you say to a client that's like, I'm, I have young kids. I'm just too busy. So one thing that, well, I say to myself too, is that when I take care of myself and, you know, get the foods that I need and work out is that it benefits my kids and family. So me, eating the whatever food, because there's really no bad food, but that doesn't serve or work for me, impacts my boys, impacts my husband, impacts my sister lives next door. It impacts everybody because we talk every day in the car, like it's our own little podcast. And so that's, I think when you're busy, and I also work with a lot of people who are in corporate or flying on planes and traveling all over the world. And part of me is like, this is so cool. Like first class, like Tell me what it's about, but their challenges and like never discount anybody. Like their challenges are that the wine is flowing and the snack cart is coming and they get the best donuts and the best, you know, glass of wine ever. And it's like, it's, it can be hard. So yes, you could be busy. You could have young moms. You could be traveling first class and it is all okay to say like that, like that's a challenge. I remember some Mm -hmm. people being embarrassed, like, well, like, I should be able to do this. Like, I'm so smart. Like, this is ridiculous. I can't say no to the snack cart on the airplane. And I'm like, I have no idea. So tell me, what is it like? Tell me, what is it like there? You know, and making it light and doable and saying like, okay, it's not that it's heavy, but let's pull ourselves out of it for a little bit. It's so funny that you bring up the first class and the snack cart. I remember <laughs> you sharing that with me like a while ago and it stuck with me. Like there is something about the way that you are with your clients where there is no judgment. It's like that whatever situation you're in that is causing a challenge for you, it's real. Like it's not, yeah. oh, you're traveling first class. There's nothing wrong with you. Fig- you're seeing beyond whatever the circumstances are. And knowing that that person is really in pain, it's really struggling, yeah. and that every single person that's committed deserves that level of support, as yeah. long as they're committed. Because I know you're big on that. Like it's not going to work if if they're not. Yeah, it's not going to work if they're not. Like you got to like take that leap of faith and go 100 percent in. And some people are ready, and some people aren't, and everybody comes to that point at a different time, and. That's okay, but you got to be willing that, you know, like to go there. Otherwise, we're still holding things back and then we could waste their time, my time, and, you know, just have to really be ready. And the same thing for me, you know, when I probably jumped into this was like, I just wasn't ready how many years ago and I still had a lot to learn and experience and I still do. And I'm excited for it. Sort of. And share <laughs> all of it. <laughs> and, yeah. It's like, to, I, honestly, I still feel like that. And I'm 16 years in. And I'm still like, sometimes like, what am I doing? Why am I doing that? What do I want? Where am I going? Like, I think it's part of the human experience. Like, if yeah. we 
stop mm-hmm. that, then I think we're not really living into the conversation, you know? Yeah. So. And I think when I did stop doing that, that's probably when I felt my worst. Yeah. When I just wasn't like going for it yeah. and just having a little faith. And that's probably when I felt the worst in my body. Yeah. It's, you know, and making this process of being healthy, fun, mm-hmm. and enjoyable is key and everybody's fun and enjoyment is so completely different. So that's true. So you take your the time with your clients to get underneath that, like really helping them feel alive again, noticing what's fun for them. Like is that like the main part of the conversation and then the kind of the weight and like is that like the back end? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we start and it's like a very loose structure. Mm-hmm. Just a lot of time and reflection and talking it out. But yeah, what brings them enjoyment? What's worth it? What's not? You know, and customizing everything for them. So there's no like what we're programmed to believe are good and bad foods from when we were little kids, especially I know little girls and all of that. And just unpacking the pain and sitting with it and reprogramming all of that is a lot of what we do. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I just, I, again, since I've been doing this for a while, I've seen women grow businesses and commit to things. And a lot of them don't stay because they're not authentically engaged. And you so are. Like, you you know? Oh my God. Like, I, I love every... Every client, I, know, I don't like, even. I remember I get yeah. messages from you like, Tara, oh my God, yeah. I have this new client. Oh yes. my God, I love her. I get so excited. I have to tell somebody. And I tell, you know, mom, dad, I tell my family, and they're like, yeah, that's awesome. But I'm like, I got to tell Tara because she understands like the depth of it and what. And how it just lights my body up. I mean, if, when I, I'm upstairs and if a client, you know, makes a commitment to herself or to himself, I run down the stairs and the boys come up and say, mommy, like, that's amazing. And like, you know, Eric and Hila, they do a thing. And it's uh, like the whole, like, you know, the whole family takes on whoever this person is because they also understand, like, just because I'm a little late to the basketball game, like I'm work, you know, I'm talking, it's our friend. It, it becomes part of us. And, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, like as a coach, like, I love them so much. And then one thing I always do is I remember learning from you, and I don't know if you, you know this, but you would write your their name in a heart before their call. And so I have all of my clients' names <laughs> in a heart. And I always say, like, I write it out and I say, like, I'm grateful and honored that this person is coming to, to talk and to listen. And either way, Either way, it's all good, and they'll leave with a little more clarity and direction moving forward, but all their names are like in a little heart because they've impacted my life so much. I never want to forget them ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. I know you do. <laughs> I love And it's like now with Amazon, it's great. Like you can send little yeah. gifts and now travel a little bit easier. So I just traveled with one client to end her journey upstate. And she was saying, I was, I'm never a runner. I'm never a runner. And I would never put running on anybody. But then now she's running like seven miles. And she's like, I guess I'm a runner. I was like, I don't know. I guess you are. Like you, like what you uncovered too. It's, it's so exciting. I could do this all day. I know. It's so exciting. When you get a chance to, to meet them in person and hug them in person. I was also in Outer Banks two years ago and two clients were yeah. there and I was like, I'll be back. Yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to go see them. And we're all in this, whatever this is, whatever you want, we're all in this together. And you know, feeling crappy in your body is all, like, you feel alone. And it really, it's really sad and it really hurts. And I don't want anyone ever to feel alone. I don't want to feel alone like that again. Kathleen, you've created something so absolutely beautiful and stunning. You are impacting this world in a huge way. I am honored to have even played any part in witnessing you 
like you are god I'm so grateful like I can like literally hear grandma and grandpa like look at you too you know like I know. look at us you know it's really yeah. extraordinary um I know I mean there's so many women in the elegant femme community and we talk about body image from the femme type perspective and you know really gifting ourselves permission to love and transform. So I know my clients are going to fall in love with you. I know the elegant fam community is going to just go crazy for you. So can you share with us like where they can find you? Where's the best place for them to connect with you and inquire about working with you? Yes, thank you. I'm also part of this community (laughs) as well. Like the, uh, (laughs) the summer one, I think you were on there like, in the morning, I forget the Love name LV. of it. I think you were part of yeah, LV. Yeah, yeah. You were part of um, the boutique coaching business. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and the one in COVID you did. It was four uh, weeks of authentic self. <laughs> and I wore earrings around during COVID in the house when no one got dressed. Everyone yeah. lived in sweats. And I remember we're on the deck, and they're like, "Why are you dressed up?" And I'm like, "Because I'm honoring myself." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing this for me. I'm not doing this for anybody else. It's because I want to wear the earrings and everyone's like, all right, Leanne, like we're just out on the deck. It's March. No one's going anywhere. Like, I'm like, all right, well, that is like something that I always take from this community too. And, you know, if anybody wants to learn more, I'm on Instagram, you know, and Kathleen Healy, HHC, it's Kathleen Healy Holistic Health Coach. And my website is Kathleen Healy Holistic Health Coach. And you just drop me an email or a DM and then you could set up. We just set up a call and see where it goes, see where it flows. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And we'll put all yeah. that in the show notes so that yeah. everybody can access it easily. But I think that that's so beautiful as well. Like you are part of this community. You understand, like you live this, you know, again and again and again. This isn't something you just thought would be a good marketing idea. Like this is your heart on your sleeve and you have helped so many people. I mean, is that that like a hundred pounds, 25 pounds, like your clients are all all over because it's not about the weight, right? Like, so it's like a hundred pounds. I've had someone lose three pounds. Some don't lose any, but feel transformed completely. And it's like, oh God, like this is so freaking cool because it's nothing that you can really hold or sell, but it's all, it's all up here. It's all in your soul. It's all in your heart. And that it's mad. I really believe it's like, it's like magic. Yeah. I don't, it is magic yeah. because you yeah. help magic. them identify what it is they're really looking for because our minds think, okay, it's about the weight. It's about this, but you go beyond that, help them find what they're truly looking for, which is acceptance, awareness of the wholeness, self-love. And then everything else just begins to reflect that truth. Oh, and then it just all, like, all the heaviness, I see it, it melts off their face, it melts oh. off their belly, it melts off their legs, and they feel like, I mean, the amount of pictures on my phone with, like, people, like, saying, like, I put a bra on for the first time, I started wearing underwear again, and talk about, you just had that podcast with Paloma about lingerie and honoring your body and being able to stare at yourself naked in the mirror and say, I am good, yeah. Like, I'm good. I'm okay. Like, this is good. This is really good. I have so many of those stories and pictures and it's like, that's when the weight really falls off. But it's hard to see the other side because we're human and we want things we can hold and grab and buy. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. It's like a a full circle moment. Like, I don't, I am so proud of us. Yeah, I'm like so like I'm trying not to cry. (laughs) I just like this is what it's about. You know? This this and it's really it starts with like that one conversation, one question, okay, you know, and then because of that, I mean dozens and dozens and dozens of people have like got off antidepressants, PCOS, some people got divorced, some people got married. I'm like whoa right like it's and then it's like so crazy how it all branches out I'm surprised and I'm grateful every time to be there on somebody's 
journey. And I know people have done it for me. And I think that at the end of the day, you know, the Tony Robbins is great, but he's not, I don't know if he's going to get on the phone with like everyone, right? So we need that, that human connection. We need somebody who's real and has gone through it and like, all right, we got each other in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So good. So, so good. Kathleen, thank you for who you are in the world. Truly, truly like above and beyond, and this is what I really wanted to express in the beginning, above and beyond being my cousin. You're a woman I admire. You're a mother I admire. You're a wife I admire. And you are a kick-ass businesswoman. (laughs) Thank you for changing so many lives. Thank you for the love that you pour through your business, through your clients, and through the world. Like I am so, so honored. I'm so honored. I love you so much. Me too. I love you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Thank so we'll you. put all the stuff in the show notes. Everyone go find Kathleen. Yes. You can call, maybe, can they call you Leany? <laughs> yeah, yeah, call me what yeah, yeah, call me Leany. Leany. I love you so yeah. much. This has been absolutely extraordinary. Actually, I have two more questions for you. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would want to just leave our audience with? Like any just nugget where you're like, okay, this is a resounding note that I would want them to hear. Yeah, I think that if they've listened to all of this and are and are curious and intrigued of what's next, where they can go, just do it. Like the timing is never going to be perfect. That's what I've learned with my business and with kids and with relationships and my body is that it's never going to be perfect. And you just you have to listen to your gut and trust it and trust that it will all be okay and that you deserve it. That you can give yourself permission to do it. You can have it. Nothing is set in stone and it's never too late. And why not? Why not now? Why not do it? I love that you can have it. Like you can have it. It's okay. You can have have it. it. Yeah. And it took me a while to realize it, but I'm like, wow, I can't believe I'm actually talking about health coaching, but I believed it. I want it. I have it. And there's so much more to come. And And one thing leads to another, but why not now? It will never be perfect. I got to keep saying that to myself too. It's never going to be perfect. Just go for it. It's so true. It's so true. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. I don't know. It's just, (sighs) there's just so much for us to celebrate and for us to be grateful for, you know, inside of all of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. A question that I ask, I think almost everybody, since this is the beautiful soul led life podcast, mm-hmm. do you have an idea of what your next vision is for your own beautiful soul led life? Like if you were to leap and just allow yourself to dream with all of us for a minute, what would be like, Oh my God. Yeah, this is a, <laughs> this is a big question <laughs> that I, it comes in waves, right? Comes in waves of what's next, what's on the vision board, what's, you know, I know Sensual Creation Day was postponed, but how you moved away from planning into creating. And that is the question, like, not what's the plan, Kathleen? Like, I've already been told, okay, buy a house, get a pension, retire. What do you want to create? Okay. So this sounds, I don't know. So, okay. I am going to be an adjunct professor as well, doing women's health in New York City in the fall. Because the person that reached out to me heard I was doing health coaching and saying, wow, we need more of this in the inner city. So one thing that I would love to create, and my husband's also a police officer, is create some sort of circle or workshop for the inner cities in New York City to show them that they can do it, that it's all possible, that they deserve it as well. And I know there's programs out there, but I want to bring my program (laughs) into the city. There's something special that to like when I work with the people in person through school. So that's something that I might want to extend out on when I will do this. I have no (laughs) idea what I will have time to run to do all of these workshops, but really something I want to create. And I think that's needed and I think it'd be valued. And yeah, some people that don't necessarily 
might want to do like the one-on-one coaching and for the younger generations and expose people to different things and all that, all of it. (laughs) So good. So good. And I mean, that's in your DNA too. I mean, your dad was a police officer. Yeah. Detective Mm -hmm. really in the end. No. Yeah. My dad was a lieutenant and now my husband's a sergeant and, you know, he's on this big, he's been working out and running and all these cops. And I love the boys. Like, I love having beers with them (laughs) and I love running with them and I love chilling and like the whole thing. So that, you know, it just, I also worked in the inner city as a phys ed teacher too. There's a part of me that like wants to go back and, and do that work. That's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Well, sending so much love and light to that unfolding and divine timing in the way that it's meant to. But I just love how big your heart is. You know, I mean, you really love deeply. You really do. You really, really do. So everyone who's listening, go check out Kathleen. You know, and like she's saying, if you feel that calling, if you feel that, if you're listening today and you feel any kind of opening or even any kind of deepening around the ache and you know it's time to gift yourself permission for support, reach out and see what's possible. Thank you so much. Merci, merci for listening to the beautiful Soul Led Life podcast. I would love if this message served you, that you support it and share it with other women who might benefit from really having their lives in balance with their fem types. And if you can leave a comment, do a review, I love reading every single one of them. And I would adore if you could take a snapshot of yourself wherever you listen to this episode and post it on social media. My Instagram is elegantfem one and I'd love to see you, share you, and just celebrate with you as you are moving into creating, experiencing, and claiming your own beautiful soul-led life.